India's first style statement arose from her freedom struggle, the Swadeshi movement, against the colonial Raj. An outcry to save her crafts, culture, and craftsperson. Today, 60 years later, a similar struggle ensues in modern India. Refusing to turn into a faceless, nameless outsource space. A few modern Mahatmas take on the challenge of weaving in India visualism. They used to call them Dalsis then, you know, not designers. Put in your money, put, you know, your effort and everything and start your own label. People would laugh at them at that time. Lifting the veil of Maya. Raising the design quotient. They seek to go from 4 US dollars to 40 US dollars. As of now, we are producing garments that start with an FOB of maybe $4 a garment and retail at, at $40 a garment. So there is that huge margin available to the Indian retailer. We are trying our, our best to come up with something that will harness the know-how that we have and use it for development of the Indian fashion industry. By 98, we had critical mass and uh, we have finally created the Fashion Design Council of India. We decided that, look, we have to help the entire industry from the workers in factories to the artisans from craft all the way till the retailer. Battling to save the lives of millions of workers affiliated with this industry. <laughs> They refuse to count out to neo-colonialism. Even 50 years after independence, you're slavishly offering your best produce to them, you offer your best mangoes to them, I mean, you know, everything. And I'm like, no, it's got to stop. And every, the whole world came here because our standards here were brilliant. And if we are to create those standards again, then it is important for people here to understand quality and to take it to the next level. I want a label. And I've said this every time I've come. Give me another subassage. The Indian market is growing every minute. They should decide how much of that they want to be for India, and then how much are they going to give me when I come here. We're Indian. This is our fashion week. We should never be embarrassed. I mean, I think that the Indian media, who very often don't have an opinion on fashion, so we'll run out to the three people who come in from a department store abroad because they have a name, and say, what did you think of the collection? And that becomes the gospel truth. I mean, if someone's here from Browns, he's looking at it in terms of his eyes for the Browns customer. But don't discredit the whole of India because it doesn't work for one customer there. Sounds the umbrella of subsidies or finance. I want to know, what is the basic rule of fashion? So you go to Paris and you see women wearing the chicest clothes every day to work. And you say, oh, you know, in India, we are an India dude, you know, no one wears dresses like this. But they do, they want to. But the Indian woman today does not wear a sari to work. I'm arguing today that how many people even know that they can buy Manisha or If you're not giving them that, then you can't complain there's no market. And you look at the fashion history around the world, the biggest designers, the first place that they sold strongly was at home. Five years down the line, if this industry complains that, oh, Mango and Zara have come into our country and beaten us, who's to blame? Standing tall against belligerent bureaucrats. If you go and set up a shop in some place, you may, in two years' time, you may find the building demolished. How does one educate people from the government to realize that what we have created, we had created this beautiful niche, pretty much like a rodeo drive. They just came and snuffed us out one day. Without organized retail. In many of the emerging markets, there's already a retail infrastructure. In India, we have designers, but we also have an emerging retail infrastructure. So I say it's like having a beautiful car and having a dirt road. 
syncopating sensitivities of universal proportions from India's mystical culture. We can do the best. We don't have to be second best or third best. We don't always have to say, why can they do it in Italy and why can they do it in France and why can't we do it in India? Indian design and Indian designers are not the flavor of the month or the week or the year. We have now become a part of the permanent cuisine of international fashion trends. Working traditional craft with a trendy twist. It was my first time and my merchant team's first time to go to India and I was expecting events with um, Designers who are designing saris. Little did I know. One after the other, we had this young generation, Indian designers, full of taste, full of energy, and we were extremely, extremely impressed. Attempting to give a cultural voice and identity to the nation's youth. We like wearing junk. <laughs> Funky, junky stuff. It's like not that, you know, we have a role model as to who dresses and I want to dress like that. The buzz that goes around that, you know, designer wear is really expensive and uh, we're not being too much into it, so I guess we're really not educated about how expensive and how cheap their stuff is. This is a silent revolution.